kind of like topic in my head, in the background of my head, and it was just considering all the things that are happening now, and you know, the word Satan came in my head for some reason. I know that sounds weird, but the word Satan did come in my head, and I was going to give a message on that. And then throughout the week, I was like, man, I know that's kind of a weird message to give. So I'll give a message, something I'm comfortable with. I'll just talk about following Jesus. Like, that's an easy one, and I can do that. And um, yesterday night, I barely got any sleep, and I'm really sick right now, but I woke up like 4.30 a.m., and I had just like a man's stomach pain. I don't know what it was. And um, I went downstairs. My dad ended up coming out, and my mom was trying to, like, take care of me and all this stuff. And in my head, I started having all this, like, thoughts, like, oh, I can't go to church this morning. There's no way. Like, I feel so sick. But it wasn't that I was too sick. It was, I found out that it was, I was kind of making excuses to not go to church, in a way. Like, if, I, if, I, if I'm sick, then I don't have to go to church. And, you know, I was talking to my dad, and, uh, you know, the thing he said was, you know, Satan's probably trying to put those thoughts into your head. And it's funny that he said that, because I never told him what I was planning on talking about. And so when he said that, at the same time, I'm not even kidding, Elmichi was in the room and she was singing, you know, uh, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. And I was just like, oh, that's probably a sign. I probably have to go to church now and speak. So I got up and, you know, I feel really sick, so please pray for me, like I'm kind of shaking. Um, but uh, I decided to talk about Satan. And um, the reason that this was in my mind to begin with, uh, throughout this week, I've been having, I usually don't, I never have dreams, but this week, like every night I've been having dreams. And it's nothing like visions or and it's just like my personal life, and all of it was negative. It was so negative. And it would be something as simple as one night I was dreaming of missing class back in college. Uh, another one was me missing like work one day, of uh, being late to work. But then I had a couple of dreams that were so severe. It was like somebody I knew died. It was stuff like that. And I would wake up every night between 5 to 6 a.m., and I even got to work early these couple of days because I woke up so early because of those dreams. And I never thought about it much. Uh, until today, I feel like God was trying to tell me that you need to talk about something that's more thought of as negative. And so this this whole thing was in my head, and um, as you guys know, a lot of things are happening in our country and around the world, um, let alone not even looking at CNN or Fox or major news. There's so much more stuff than that. Um, all the killings, all the, the terrorist killings, the police battle, and on top of all that, then we have this election. I don't want to get started on that, the two presidents that we have to pick from. That's another major thing. Um, and I was talking to a friend, and you know, she said something that was really, um, that kind of struck me that I never thought about. She said that everyone's focused on all this fights and battles and wars, but we're forgetting about the whole spiritual warfare in the back. And that kind of touched me, personally. And I was like, man, that's so true. Especially as Christians, it's so easy to get caught up in the world and follow everyone else and think that, oh, our, our struggles against the police or, you know, the terrorists and all this stuff. But, you know, somebody read Ephesians 6, 12, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms, right? And so today I'm talking about Satan. And my question is, when you see that word, I did that on purpose. I know it's a, I'm not a very creative guy, so that's my creative title. But um, when you see that word, what comes into your head? And then maybe a lot of things come into your head, you know. Um, some of you guys think about cartoons with Satan's in it. You know, no one's really, I don't know about you, but I've never seen Satan. You know, I don't know how to picture him. Well, the way I see him is like uh, like a spirit that kind of, you know, roams the earth. You know, some people see, you know, <laughs> the, the reason I put the bug in the middle is because I, I hate wasps and I hate flying things. Because I think flying things are the worst things because you never see them coming. And just, to me, they're like the devil. Um, some people think Donald Trump, Trump is the devil. I should put I should have put Hillary Clinton there too, but um, I forgot to put it there. But uh, despite what we all think about our image of Satan, uh, next slide. We all fall. Everybody in this world falls into into three different groups. The first one, all these three groups, by the way, is I've I've been in a phase of my life. That's why I kind of I'm talking about this. Um, the first group is the unawares, is what I call them. There are people who think Satan is irrelevant for many reasons. It could be, oh, Satan doesn't really exist. I know we say we're Christian, we believe in Satan, but at the same time, I feel a lot of us, we kind of in the back of our heads don't think Satan really exists, like really, in reality. 
Uh, some of us think Satan is a fairy tale story. We kind of read him in the Bible, we're like, okay, that's nice, that's a fairy tale story. Some of us do believe in Satan, but we're like, so what? Satan exists, so what? And then some of us are just, you know, Satan wouldn't worry about me. He has other things to kind of worry about. Why would he bother his time with me? And um, I, I, one story I have is kind of related to this, is kind of different, is when I was in college, I would go, I mean, if you're like a close friend of mine, you know I love to go on walks. I love to go on walks. And I would go on walks. It's help, it helps me clear my mind, especially at, I go on walks at night at UT campus. It's like a beautiful campus, so I just walk around the whole campus at night sometimes. And, you know, one night, I think it was like two days after my graduation, I was on campus, and for some reason I felt, you know, something was leading me to go this certain direction. And so I was walking, and I saw this guy on this bench crying. I didn't think much about it. I kind of walked. It was, it was kind of weird. It was 2 a.m. in the morning. Uh, this guy was sitting on a bench, but, you know, UT's a big campus. You see everyone everywhere. I didn't really think much about it. I just kind of walked by him and just kept walking. And then, you know, I, I, I got to this place that I always, you know, sit at. It's the, it's the tower, the UT tower. And I was sitting there, and I feel like the Holy Spirit was telling me, you know, go back is what I heard. The word go back. And I wasn't thinking about this guy who was crying. I, I saw a police officer earlier, and he stopped me. He was asking me what I was doing this late at night. And so I told him. So I thought the Holy Spirit was telling me to go talk to the police officer. So... I go back and I'm like, man, all these thoughts are in my head, this is weird. Like, I don't know if I wanna do this. So I go back and I can't find the police officer. And I'm, I'm like 10 minutes walking around there, can't find him, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna head back. And so then this guy comes out of nowhere, takes a seat right next to me, I'm not even kidding. He's, he's like crying. And he takes a seat right next to me. And at that moment I realized, oh, okay, this is what the Holy Spirit wanted me to do, talk to this guy. But I didn't, that's the thing, I didn't. And in my head, I was kind of scared. I was like, you know, he got up to walk, and I was like, I don't want to just go behind. It's 2 a.m. in the morning. Me just coming behind him saying, hey, what's up? He might think I'm trying to attack him or something. I don't know. It was, it was weird. It was sketchy. Like, I wouldn't want someone to do that to me. So I had all this thought in my head. But uh, I had all these thoughts in my head, and it was, it was Satan trying to convince me not to do it. That's what it was. And uh, it was Satan trying to convince me not to do it. And uh, at that moment in my life, I was not super close, like super, super close to God uh, at that time. And it wasn't, it wasn't even that I was super close to God. It was just I was very unaware of the whole idea of Satan. You know, it was, he was kind of something that, oh, it, that he doesn't really exist, he's not there. And I kind of put the blame on me, but if I realized that, you know, Satan was the one who's putting these thoughts in my head, I'll be more inclined to talk to the person. So, I mean, the, the first group of people is the unawares. And the greatest trick the devil, it says right there, ever pulled was convincing the world he doesn't exist. Um, the next slide. The second group is the underestimators. Um, they're people who, you know, see Satan kind of like this. And uh, they think Satan is harmless. They say things like, it can't be Satan. You know, Satan's too weak. Satan doesn't really know anything. They underestimate the power of Satan or what Satan can do in their lives. Um, and for me, I also went through this phase. Um, I really thought, you know, I, when, when you think of Satan not being harmless and you have temptations come into your life or, you know, things that you're gonna encounter in your life, you kind of see Satan as like this kind of like, he kind of looks cute, right? You kind of want to play with him. And so you have this temptation of the sin and you kind of get as close as you can, that you can without getting burned. It's kind of like touching fire. You're trying to see how close you can get without being burned. And a lot of people fall into this. They underestimate temptation. They, they pull it off as like, oh, you know, this relationship with this girl or something that's not Christian, oh, I can, I can, I can convert her later, you know? We're just friends right now, so I can keep talking to her. Or, you know, it could be something like, you know, we have a lot of technology, a lot of screens in front of us, going to a site that we shouldn't be on. You know, things like that. Oh, you know, it's not a big deal, it's only once. We kind of underestimate Satan. Uh, so that's the second group of people. The third one is the overestimators. We see Satan as this big, powerful guy. They pretty much point to Satan more than they point to God. That's what these people do. Uh, 
these people say that Satan is too powerful. You know, Satan knows everything. Satan is, you could say in the back of our heads, we think Satan is bigger than God sometimes. Um, you know, this is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, next, next one. So who is he? Who is Satan? Satan is a hater. That's what he is. That's really what he is. He, he's, a, he's against God. The whole, his whole dynamic with God is he hates everything God hates. And just like, um, I don't know about you guys, when I studied chemistry in, in high school and college, you know, one of the things that a lot of people get confused about heat is that. So like other day in, uh, when I was at work, one of the senior engineers, he was talking about this pipeline. And he said, oh yeah, we put a jacket on it to keep the cold out. And everybody started laughing at that. And the reason he said that is because he said keep the cold out, but you're not keeping the cold out, you're just keeping the heat in. The, the whole point is, the absence of heat is cold. And the same way as, as this is that, you know, the absence of love is really hate. And that's what Satan is. He's, he has no capacity of love. God is all capacity of love. And Satan is the opposite of that. He's literally hate. And uh, who is Satan? We can turn to 1 Peter 5, uh, verse 8. He's a predator. Someone can read that. Yeah, Satan is a predator, as you can tell from that verse. Um, and it's, it describes him as a roaring lion. And I don't know who here watched or uh, watched National Geographic and seen a lion hunt. Have you guys seen that? Do you know how a lion hunts? A lion hides, right? This person, he's, he's in the grass, he's watching, he's observing. And he waits, he waits for uh, one, one gazelle or one deer to be away from the pack. That's the one he goes after. He doesn't go after the pack. He goes after one that's lost. That's how Satan works. And a Satan, Satan like, like a lion, he goes after things that are alive. The lion doesn't go after dead things, right? Right? He's not a vulture, a hyena. A lion only kills live things. Satan's the same way. He goes after spiritually alive people. He doesn't go after spiritually dead people because they're already dead, so he doesn't have to do anything. So the same way, Satan is a predator. That's what you have to realize. He will go after you. More than anyone in this world, he's going to go after the Christians because they know the truth. They're the spiritually alive people. So you have to be aware of that. Uh, the second one is Satan is a deceiver. 2 Corinthians 11, verses 14. Someone can read that. And no wonder Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Yeah. It's the same way in the Bible, I think, it says uh, some people are like uh, wolves in sheep's clothing. That's Satan. He's a deceiver. Um, Satan is a tempter. Genesis 3, verses 4. So um, we know the story of Adam and Eve. Um, Satan tempted Eve and also Adam. But the most important things you have to realize is you need to be aware of is Satan is a clever deceiver and tempter. He's not just a deceiver and tempter. He's very clever. If you look at the stories of Adam and Eve and the story of Job and the story of uh, Ananias and Sapphira, uh, all these people, you know, Satan had a very distinct plan with it. You know, he tempted Adam and Eve in, in the, the Garden of Eden. He had a certain way. You know, he doesn't come at he come on one way. He uses whatever is around you, your 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 hindrances, your past, your sins, your habits, whatever your environment, he uses that against you. He came in the form of a snake on a tree. And he used an apple to tempt. If you think about it, it's kind of kind of crazy. He used the apple to cause the demise of the whole mankind. It's crazy. But that's what Satan did. The story of Job, you know, we know all, we know the story of that. Uh, Satan goes to Job. Takes away everything he has. And he's and everything that Job has, his whole environment. Even his wife says he still prays God. And Job still prays God, no matter what. Um, but Job used every Job can use, I mean uh, Satan can use anything. Um, next slide. Uh, but who is God? We talked about who is Satan, but who is God? So Satan is powerful, but he's not all powerful. God is all powerful. Satan knows some things, but God knows everything. Satan is the god of this world, but you know, the god, our God is the king and lord of all the universes. And Satan is defeated. Jesus is victorious. So we have to understand that we have to acknowledge, yes, Satan can do things. Satan is relevant in our life. He is there. 
He is powerful, but he's not more powerful than our God. He's not all-powerful. He knows things, but he's not all-knowing. He is the God of this world, but he is not the God of the universe. We have to understand certain things like this. And uh, the whole, you know, the whole basis of Satan is that he feeds off sin. That's what Satan does. He feeds off sin. And when Jesus came into this world and he died on the cross and he broke that, you know, broke the wages of sin and death, he cut off the supply of Satan. Because that's, that's what Satan's feed supply is. And so Satan was defeated at that moment. Jesus victorious. Next slide. Uh, misconceptions. You know, Satan cannot destroy you, but he can convince you to destroy yourself. Um, and I think that's that's really important. A lot of us think that, you know, we have a habit of some people blame everything on Satan. Every, Satan does this, Satan do that. But Satan can only do as much as you let him, really. It, it's, it's up to you because Satan, like God, operates on free will. He's also bound to this earth. He operates on free will. He can only harm you as much as you let him. It's your choice. Um, Satan can work through many ways, just like we say God works in mysterious ways. He can work through your computers. He can work through your friends. He can work through your past. Uh, he can do so many things. You know, he has a large toolbox, but the, the point is that you're the one supplying the tools, right? And you can reduce that, that toolbox. Uh, so all you need to do, um, I put these three verses there, Romans 8, verse 31. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? And uh, this is just giving light to comparing the size between God and Satan. Uh, if you really believe that God is God, that he is Lord of everything, that he is the King of kings, the Lord of lords, he is in control of everything, then and if you're on his side, then why are you afraid? Who can be against you? You know, I remember when I was a kid, you know, me and Sam used to sleep in the same bed in the same room. And not, not, I think not even in our, own, in our new house we did too. But sometimes me and Sam, I remember when I was a kid, I got scared. And when I get scared, I used to sleep with nightlight too because I was, I was just scared of the dark. And uh, when I got scared, I just ran to my parents' room. That was my first instinct, to run to my parents' room. It's like, Mommy, Dad, can I sleep with you? And then my dad moves over and I sleep with him. Then I, for some reason, I feel peace. I feel peace. I don't know why. There's no, no, nothing... You think about nothing my dad could do that you know no one else could do but the reason that I, I took comfort in that is because I saw my dad as someone who would do anything for me right and I saw my dad as someone who was invincible and someone that you know when I was a kid that if anyone harmed, harmed me they have to go through my dad first that's what I saw in the same way as Christians we forget that we, we forget that our God is invincible we forget that when, if people are trying to harm us even Satan that he has to go through God first to get to us so we have to, you know, understand that. Um, Ephesians 6.11, put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. Um, we, all, we all know this verse too. You know, to combat any temptation or any sin is the armor of God. You know, the belt, the, you know, salvation, truth, righteousness, all these things are used to, are against the temptation of the devil. But also Matthew 4, 1 through 11, when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, Jesus used the word of God to put away uh, the Satan's schemes. And he even said, you know, it is written again, it is written, thou shalt not tempt thy Lord thy God. Even Satan in the verse, if you look at it, uh, I don't think we have time to read it, but uh, he even mentioned scripture, Satan himself. He references scripture. But Jesus said, he, he, he combats back and says scripture in return. And a lot of times Satan will do that. And a lot of my friends do that too. We, we love to justify and misconstrue the word. Um, a lot of people do that at UT with inappropriate behavior. They say, oh, the Bible doesn't say this. The Bible says this and, you know, this. And that's when you guys, that's the temptation, if you guys didn't know. That's when you guys need to speak up and say, the Bible actually says this. This is what, this is what the Bible means. This is what the word of God says. So those things come up in your life. You have to say, and basically know the word, pray, and then claim the word. That's what Jesus did. And that's how we combated uh, the devil. Uh, next slide. So um, I put this analogy in there because when I was thinking about it, I think uh, a long time ago, I used to fish a lot, a lot more. Uh, and I know some people fish here. I think we were talking about going on a fishing trip or something. But uh, I put bite the bait versus swim away. Um, if you if you've seen a fisherman fish, there's uh, the first thing he does is he attaches a bait on his rod, and he, then he casts it and it's sitting there in the water. 
But what a fisherman doesn't do, he doesn't make, he doesn't throw the, he doesn't throw the bait in the fish's mouth. He just puts it in the water, and then he waits. You know, Satan's the same way. You know, he throws baits, he throws temptations, he throws these circumstances in your life, and it's 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 not something that's forced down to you. It's that you have to go to the bait and you have to bite it. So there's three there's three responses to this. It's, you can bite the bait, and then you get caught and get out of the water. Uh, you bite the bait and you struggle with the hook, then you might get away. Or then you swim away. I don't know why the numbers are messed up, but then you can swim away. Those are the three. Those are the three responses. And so the first one is biting the bait. It's it's the fish that that just kind of just go for the thing without thinking anything, just biting it, not worrying about it, and they get plucked out of the water. That's like uh, I don't know how to pronounce the name Aeneas and Sapphira. There were you know if you read the scripture, someone can maybe we can read that. I think it's in Acts. Uh, yeah, 5, 1 through 11 or something. Yeah, someone can read that. So that, that's like the best story for this uh, subsection. Uh, this couple, you know, as you heard, they allowed Satan to tempt them, they fell for it, they kept the money, and then not only did it affect them, but it affected the whole church. It seized the whole, fear seized the whole church. And uh, these people were plucked out of the water. Uh, the fishermen was fishing, they plucked out of the water. The same way with us, you know, we are like fish. It's just that we're, we're, we're swimming in the, like, I guess you can say the living water, right? And Satan is trying to pull us away from the living water, which is Christ. And so, you know, the story of Judas as well. Uh, he was plucked out of the water as well. He, he carried, you know, he overcame with greed, and uh, he was the closest one to Jesus. This even shows that even the people that were really, you know, you can be so close to God, and Satan can still come after you, and that can still, you can be plucked away. Um, and that can be some of us here. You know, we have this bait in front of us. We don't even know what it's doing there, but we go for it without thinking about it. And without us knowing it, by the time we're so far away from God, so far away from the living water, we dry out, and it's too late. And it not only affects us, it affects the whole church. And that's a lot of problems with Christians today, and, you know, the churches today, honestly. The second one is uh, biting the bait and struggling with the hook, and then getting away. Um, you know, these are, this is kind of like what I said, this is like Peter. Uh, Peter, Peter kind of, when he denied Christ, he, I would say he fell into temptation. Uh, but, you know, he was struggling with the hook, but he came back. And so this is some of us here, you know. In my life, I've, I've had a lot of that. Is You know, you kind of bite it, you learn from your mistake, and you come back to God. A lot of these moments are kind of part of our Christian progress because it not only humbles us, but it makes us, you know, realize that we really need God. And, uh, you know, I think someone told me a lot of times is, you better humble yourself before God humbles you. And the same way... Satan can do a good job humbling you as well if you're not careful. If you let that bait, you know, capture your interest. Uh, the third one is swimming away, just totally ignoring the bait. These are these are people like Job, Jesus in the wilderness. These are the people who know who know the word of God, who knows who their God is. No matter what bait, no matter what circumstance, no matter what situation, they deny it. They swim away fast, fast away. And it's, it's a blessing to others, and they get blessed as well. So, fix yourself and rebuild it.
hopefully so. Um, my question is, I, I guess I talked a lot about, uh, my goal is just to point, because I feel like we really forget about Satan in the background, is uh, we really think for some reason that hey, everything in this world, whatever we see in front of us is our, is our fight. But there's a lot of things going in the background that we have to realize. And it all comes back to what is your relationship with God? You know, the spiritual affects the physical, right? You know, if, I don't know about you guys, but if your spiritual life is kind of weak, you kind of feel weaker mentally or physically as well. You know, you're more discouraged. You don't want to do things. You get more lazy. Uh, it affects your physical in the same way in this world. You know, there's a spirituality in this world. And right now, that spirituality right now is really weak. And now you're seeing the world hurting so much. There's so many physical violence going on, so many physical pain. Uh, so what's your relationship with God? Really? Or I guess, who is God to you? That's, that's the next question. Do you really realize who God is? Or is he just kind of three big letters in the sky, G-O-D, and then just kind of pray, pray to God on Sunday and kind of move on? On second of that is, what's your relationship with others? Because Satan can work through your relationships as well, even Christian relationships. If he sees a weakness, he, he's the first one to go for it. Do you have any bad habits, any bad relationships right now that you need to fix or rebuild? Is there anything that's holding you back? So, I mean, that's pretty much my message. I know it's not like 30 minutes, but um, I hope that blesses you guys.